Good evening and welcome to United Insurance's Line and Life. To all our viewers on Scene TV and on Sportsmax, I'm your host, Andrew Seeley. On tonight's program, the doyen of Caribbean journalist Tony Cozier and cricket analyst Hendy Wallace as we look at the ICC World T20 and the West Indies performance and also a 19-point plan from the West Indies Cricket Board. Will it really take our cricket forward? This and more tonight on the United Insurance's Line and Line. We'll be back in just a moment. When you are insured with United Insurance, you know you're in safe hands because our AM Best Excellent Rating means that we have the financial strength and stability to protect your prized possessions. Rely on the company that understands your needs for property, motor, business, and marine insurance. For all your general insurance needs, choose United Insurance. Welcome back to United Insurance's Line and Life. And as I said earlier, Tony Cozier and Hendy Wallace are in the studio. Gentlemen, what an exhilarating performance by the West Indies so far. Tony? Well, apart from one match, the first one. Well, it was Against exhilarating then too, but on the wrong really, side. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> the first match had nothing to it. It wasn't, right. a, it wasn't a tight finish. Um, so many of the matches have been so, as you say, exhilarating. Um, my wife and our sister-in-law, my sister-in-law, who is staying home with us, um, you know, they don't know anything about cricket. They, they hardly ever go and so on. They're riveted to mm -hmm. T20. And I think everyone is riveted. I mean, you look and see with, with Holland having to make, what was it, 190 or something off, 40, 14 13, points. 13 points over. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, 19 sixes. Mm -hmm. And then they almost beat uh, South Africa. And then you get West Indies coming back from that little slump after winning the uh, f first World matches and regrouping. Because you would expect, a lot of people expected, I would say, that the West Indies, having beat, lost the first match pretty badly, would have found it difficult to psychologically lift themselves. Mm -hmm. And look what they've done. You know, they've come out really, really strong, hammered Bangladesh. Well, I mean, that was to be expected. And now beaten Australia in the last over, when that didn't seem possible at all. Handy, clearly 2020 is here to stay. And clearly we have become the exponents of the art of 2020 cricket. We mean in the West Indies. Well, first of all, we're defending our World T20 champions. And also, you feel that the, the style of which West Indies play the cricket, that the T T20 format is suited to the skills of our players. Uh, we see a lot of power hitters down the line, and they're very strong in the field as well. And the other string to the bow, so to speak, is the bowling aspect of it. And gradually, we're seeing some depth in our bowling as well, which is making the West Indies side even more formidable. And as Tony just mentioned there about his family members, I think that that's exactly what T20 has done, is capture that borderline supporter or the person who's not so sure about cricket. They enjoy T20 cricket. It's, it's great commercial value and it's entertainment from start to finish. Well, clearly, uh, as Handy mentioned, Tony, it's definitely here to stay. Um, how do we galvanize that support which centers around T20 cricket into the, the other forms of cricket? Well, there are two, 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 two ways of doing it. Um, first of all, you've got to have promotion and marketing. We have none of that for our first class competition. It's almost an afterthought. Um, Bobby has played Trinidad here, one of the oldest rivalries in West Indies sport, and you don't know it's on. There's been no advertising, no promotion, nothing. And they then limit the crowd to one stand. So therefore, what are you saying to the people? We don't expect you to come. But if you do come, yeah. <laughs> you've got to sit in one stand. Mm. I mean, that's really bad. Mm. They've really got to look at the marketing. And then, as far as the competition itself is concerned, to try and get all the best players back in the competition. I mean, look at Trinidad and Tobago. If you had your best players back, you've got Simmons, Bravo, Pollard, Gale, Narine. I mean, to see them play against a Jamaica team with Gale, Russell, Samuels, and so on. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just don't have that. We used to have that, of course, in the 80s when we were really strong. And you'd see Daniel and Clark and Marshall bowling at Viv Richards uh, and Richie Richardson, etc. That's what made our cricket strong, where at that level you had almost test match level, some say above test, test match, match level, yeah. um, and we just don't have that now. And the, our first class season is just treated as a, as a nothing. Afterthought. Yeah, nothing. Almost an afterthought. Nothing. Uh, mm. Hendy, as, as chairman of selectors, we're going to get back to the T20, but it's an interesting point being made by Tony. As chairman of selectors uh, for Barbados, they, 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 you must face 
issues similar to what Tony's talking about in terms of being able to select <coughs> what you may consider your best Barbados team? Yes. Yes, you do have the challenges. I try to put a positive spin on it by using the opportunity to expose more players who are at the same level, and uh, which is nothing new as far as Barbados is concerned in the fast bowling department. We have a dilemma where we have about six players who are of West Indies experience or what have you. So with the guys away on international duty or foreign um, jobs with the various T20 tournaments around the world, we then use that opportunity to try and rotate those players the best way we possibly can. Now what will happen is that there will be some disappointment along the way, but you would expect that, and I say it's nothing new. But you try to be as fair as possible, and we, we guided to that the, the main focus is Barbados cricket. Uh, yes, you want to develop your players, you want to expose as many players as possible, but you want to make sure that you get the right mix so that Barbados cricket is going in the right direction. Okay, gentlemen, we're, we're going to get back to, in fact, the 19-point plan from the West Indies Cricket Board in the second half of the program. But if we, look, if we look at the World T20 now in its entirety, we have seen some interesting matchups uh, involving Bangladesh, involving the Netherlands, uh, but more particularly against South Africa. How have you viewed the tournament so far, Tony, uh, uh, especially in terms of the cricket on the field? Well, I think the cricket on the field, even with um, the, the first round between the associates, um, Hong Kong beat Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, that match between Holland and Ireland we mentioned before, where they had to get 190 or 14.2 overs. And Nepal came through really well and so on. So you're looking at new teams there. And T20 cricket is the only format which gives them the opportunity to spring surprises. You wouldn't expect, for instance, uh, let's say Afghanistan to beat Australia in a test match. Mm -hmm. But you put them in a 2020, you never can tell. And it's, what, since 2020 has come in, the first 2020, Zimbabwe beat Australia. Um, you know, you get those, it's there, and it's a creation for excitement and for unpredictability, for for excitement and, and also for upsets. Um, now that's what we're, we're getting. And then of course you look at um, the match uh, between West Indies and Australia on Friday. Um, you get West Indies can't win that. No way. You look in the last two overs, three overs. I'm a pessimist. Um, I, I watch West Indies cricket long too enough. Often, too problem. often to be a pessimist. <laughs> and they win it. They win it with two balls to spare. I mean absolutely fantastic. You know, it uh, really it is fantastic. Uh, Captain Sammy, Hendy, what more can we say about Captain Sammy? I think he's led the team well. Uh, he's done it consistently, in my view. What I admire about Sammy is how well, how successful he has been in his period as, as captain when the chips have been totally against him. And to me, that shows a, a strength of character. And gradually, I'm seeing the players more and more respecting and acknowledging him as captain and as the leader of this part, especially when we're, we're, we're batting. I think he's obviously identified a role for himself which has been very effective for West Indies and the success of West Indies. And that was really critical when we you know, put this team together uh, a couple of years ago for T20 cricket, was to be clear of the roles of the respective players. And once players have their roles clearly identified, I think you're on the right path. In terms of roles, Tony, obviously Samuel Badre and Krishmar Santoki have come into the setup and clearly have recognized their roles and gone forward and in fact have become trump cards for the team. Well, Badre was there. Yeah, yeah the previously, champion, yeah, champion but, but he not played that much. Um, yeah. But he played in almost yeah, every match. Yeah. He played in the final. Mm -hmm. um, Santoki has only just come into the West Indies setup. Um, when you look at Santoki's returns in regional cricket, he deserves a play. There's no question about that. Uh, he played one match, I think, against the Australians and uh, cleaned up Warner in his first over in St. Lucia. And he played, he bowled two overs and then they took him off. You know, I feel that he's, he's a bowler who re really needs to go as um, for his four overs to mm -hmm. begin with. He comes back later on when batsmen are getting edges and so on. But he, he's proved himself and he's very clever bowler as they're saying. Now he's wrapping his fingers over the ball and um, bowling slow, medium. But someone mentioned Derek Underwood the other night. Now, mm. now that's the kind of uh, comparison which uh, indicates that here's a bowler um, who doesn't look too much, but uh, you know he keeps line length, he's at you all the time, and he very, very rarely bowls a bad ball. And uh, you know, he's, he's proved very, very effective for the West Indies in these conditions. But I think almost in any conditions he would. 
But it's interesting you mentioned conditions because that has been part of the discussion among the commentators, the conditions and what could possibly happen as we move into the, the, the latter stages of the tournament, Hendy, when the conditions perhaps become even drier uh, and, and the spinners come even more into effect. Well, when Tony mentioned there about the T20 format and it shortening the odds between teams, there are other variables as well and conditions will be one of them. The pitches, we also talk about the due factor which some mm -hmm. of the teams have encountered. So, tactically you have to be on top of your game as well. You can't just go in um, with a set plan and not be, f not be flexible because your spinners then could become ineffective if the due factor becomes a... Mm -hmm. a, a, a Too much of a factor. <laughs> precisely, if it comes into the equation. Mm -hmm. So, again, teams have to look at that in their, in their planning to make sure they cover all the bases. And you see with, like, with Sri Lanka and England, for instance, the Sri Lankan slow bowlers then became less effective and to some degree the seamers as well because the ball was like a bar of soap. So the control wasn't there that you would expect from the Sri Lankan bowlers. And I think then that aided not taking anything away from Alex Hales' innings, but it certainly helped the English to get over that, what was a what seemed a very formidable total from the Sri Lankans? Well, it was a very formidable total, and 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 kudos put to the performance of the England team, which we had seen down here, at Tony, and were not totally impressed with. No, but they, they had a fellow make a hundred. Yeah. They were they lost two wickets in the first over, right. so they needed a, a partnership. Well, we know about Morgan. Morgan's got a big reputation in the abbreviated format of the game. And Hales then came on. I know he made 99 against the West Indies in a 20, T20 match in, at Trent Bridge mm -hmm. in 2012. Um, I think we knew that he had potential. He had a bad tour here. He didn't look the part. But then he goes there, started badly in the series in, in uh, Bangladesh, in the war matches. But they get with him. And, of course, he produced that magnificent match-winning innings. Talking about that, as far as match winning is concerned, just get back to Darren Sammy. Remember um, back in when they were playing 50 overs cricket only, there was no T20. The big finisher was Bevan, Michael Bevan. Michael Australia. Bevan, that's right. Hardly played test cricket, but he was key, ideal key, at the yeah. end. Key at the end for Australia. That is what Sammy is doing now at the end. You know, he won um, an ODI in New Zealand. 43 off 28 balls came in at the end. We'd lost seven wickets uh, early, um, and we needed runs to get in the end. He slammed the ball all over the place. We saw what he did with Bravo in the first ODI here against England. You know, when he comes in at the end and wheels that bat, and he's a strong fellow, and if you give him just the kind of length and line that he needs, the length more, more so, he'll hit the ball out of the ground, well, not out of the ground, into the stands. stands. Probably kill a few mm -hmm. people there, <laughs> because it's going... Flat, flat, flat. Whereas Gail is up in the air, so you've got time to run. You know, <laughs> with Sammy, you'll have time to run. It's like a tsunami. Zoom! <laughs> We're not running anywhere now, suppose. Yeah, we're going to come right back with you. You're watching United Insurance's Dine Life. When we come back, there's a 19 point plan from the West Indies Cricket Board. When you are insured with United Insurance, you know what it feels like to feel this safe. Choose the financially strong regional insurance company with the strength and stability to protect your prized possessions. For property, motor, business, and marine insurance, you're in safe hands with United Insurance. Welcome back to United Insurance's Dining Line for in the studio, Tony Cozier and Hendy Wallace. And gentlemen, we're now going to take a look at this 19-point plan from the West Indies Cricket Board. Tony, I know you know for sure that this is not the first plan from the board. No, but this, this now deals specifically with cricket, mm -hmm. whereas some of the other plans dealt with governance and so on. And this is pretty compre comprehensive as far as cricket is concerned. Um, some people will say, well, there are one or two issues on it where it's very difficult to carry them out. But, you know, at least they've made, a, made an effort. Richard Pipers has come down. He's been around the Caribbean. He's spoken to people. Um, he's got ideas um, locally. And... Uh, He's worked on that, and now he's presented to the board, and the board has uh, approved all of them with the exception of one, which I see um, deferred. And uh, it, the one that's deferred states uh, a board sign off on professionalism, professionalization of the regional first class game. Six first class cricket teams, strength versus strength. Now that means one has got to drop out, and of mm. course that will be CCC. CCC. Now, you know, there's been a lot of talk about that. You know what happened in Trinidad in the Nagico Pro 50, where they were out 
uh, and then put back in. Mm -hmm. A lot of talk and a lot of controversy over it. Um, I don't think anyone would want to see the CCL, CCCL, but the board has to, has to ensure that the whole purpose of the CCC is adhered to. So you get Floyd Reefer, for instance, still playing at the age of 41 and keeping a 20-year-old um, Ali in the opening Anthony batsman, Ali. Anthony. I mean, he was ready to play. Apparently, I've heard that he, he's, he was crying uh, on the morning of the match when Floyd Reefer came into his place. Now, Reefer has done a good job, no question about that. Uh, you can see the esteem which, with, with which he's held at the university. But is he needed on the field? I mean, it's demeaning to, to the students to feel that we can't handle ourselves. We need someone out there with us. I think the, it's got to be the students and students alone. Ryan Austin, not a student, he's an employee of the CCC. So the board has got to ensure that these things are straightened out, that they, the system which they have in mind is not abused. And once that's fine, CCC should remain. How, is it that we need to further or redefine the concept of CCC? Or has it been properly defined uh, or, and is it come off the tracks what what's what's what is it Andy? well i actually can't say I don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's been properly defined but uh i think that all and sundry would say that if it, it if it actually functions the way it should i think it's beneficial to to west indies cricket and it gives an opportunity for those students around the region who may not necessarily be able to break into the team not because of lack of skills but because of lack of opportunity uh, to get a chance to really showcase their talent. So I feel that students who are looking to balance their studies and their playing expertise, I think it's an, I think it's an excellent channel for these young players. It's supposed to be development. Mm -hmm. And uh, you cannot tell me that someone like Reefer and Austin, Jonathan Carter was in, in there and uh, he had some problems with him. I don't know, he got kicked out. So he's playing for Barbados mm -hmm. now. Um, that, you know, players who are not students who are over 30, over 40. <laughs> they're not there for development. They're not developing. They're, they haven't got a chance to play for West Indies. You know that. Austin will not play for no. West Indies. Mm -hmm. Reefer will not play for the West Indies again, unless somebody goes on strike. And, uh, you know, th the thing is that it's there for a develop as a development team. And I know there's a body of opinion going around that an A team, a West Indies A team, would do just the same thing. Of course, the question of the educational uh, element coming into it um, goes on the, w on the side of CCC. Um, I don't want to be critical of the CCC because when you are, they get very uptight up there and, you know, email, email you and write all sorts of things in the paper about you. But, you know, you've got to stick to what the concept originally was. Well, if we look at if we look at the plan itself, Tony, the, there were 19. What, what do you consider the, some of the more major aspects of the 19-point plan? Well, I think all of them. I mean, you look at all of them. I mean, okay. you know, all together, mm -hmm. um, they, they aren't separate. You know, they, they, they need to be. I th they, yeah, I think they need to be um, combined. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's some which may be more important than others, and but it's all on cricket. And therefore, what I mentioned as far as the, the marketing is concerned is not in here. Mm -hmm. Now, that to me is a priority. And also, it is mentioned in here to try and get the top players back for our season. Now, that really is, those two things to me mm -hmm. are really a priority. Well, Hendy, you were wanting to make a point? Well, for me, um, you know, as I said, it really needs to, everything needs to really work together. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I, was, I was very happy to see that some emphasis was placed on the the facilities, the pitches mm -hmm. and stuff around the region, that uh, there'd be some focus on that as well because uh, we put a lot of emphasis on the players and the standard of cricket and what have you, but I believe that the conditions in which they play will have a role in what we see on the field of play. <coughs> so I'm, I'm happy to see that some attention has been played to that as well in the, in the plan. The concept of a coaching manager, how, how, how do you view that, Andy? Again, that's all part of development mm -hmm. for your, your coaching structure, mm -hmm. not necessarily at the top but certainly at your regional level and maybe just on the under 19 level as well, you would expect that uh, if that template is in place for your, your coaching manager to oversee the development of your coaches, that can also have a knock-on effect. So I think that's primarily for your overall coaching structure in your cricket. And we've gone back now, Tony, to something which I always thought should have been the case, that the coach it will now be a selector and a voting selector where the captain will be invited to the meeting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Not all the countries um, use that system. No, no. Australia don't. No, no. Um, I'm not sure with, with India and the others. But you would think 
you know, with their input would be essential. You know, you're giving a fellow who is captain in the side. There's the side. Oh, I, I don't want that fellow. Want that, mm. But you have to take him, you know. So I think, but any selection panel, if they're, you know, thinking clearly, would want to, even if the captain is not on the selection panel, would say, can we get your views? Mm -hmm. And the coaches and everything. Go around, and I'm sure that they do. Go around and check the coaches, you know, check the players, senior players. What do you think of this youngster coming up? How, do you, how does it look? To me this year, this coincides with a season so far which has been very positive as far as I'm concerned. No longer are we getting totals of under 100. We had a few. Um, but now you're getting totals over 300, over 400. You've got a lot of hundreds. The whole of that 2013, there were three hundreds in our first class competition, three. Now I think you've got about six or seven already, and you've got some youngsters who've got hundreds on debut. Um, Hussein from Trinidad, um, although he's injured now. Uh, Blackwood from uh, Jamaica, uh, or is it Cameron? One of the, I think it's Cameron, um, one of them. Uh, who, in their first match, 100. Mm -hmm. um, Ambrose, yeah, Ambrose from the 100. Universe. Then you've got the two here, two all-rounders, Carlos Braffitt. I hope he now realizes that he can bat, <laughs> you know. And the same with Ashley Nurse. He can bat. You know, he makes hundreds in the local competition. He's an off-spinner, but don't consider himself only an off-spinner. Yeah, and, we, and we had two CCC centuries, just to, just to bring that in. Shakoya Thomas and Chadwick well, Walton. Well, Chadwick Walton you expect, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? But this fellow, Thomas, Thomas, I saw him in Trinidad. He's a big, strong fellow. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I reckon that he could well go on. He, look, mm. he, looks, he looks good in the field, um, and he's, he hits the balls nicely. It's just for him now to go on. That's what we look for. Fellow makes 100, next thing you know, Jonathan Carter. Makes 100, mm. long inconsistency. What you're looking for is consistency, not only in the individuals, but in the team itself. And uh, now we're getting totals of over 300, over 400. Very few now under 200, which used to proliferate uh, over the last 10 years or so. Well, it seems as if 2014 could be a good year for West Indies cricket. When we come back, we'll hear from Handy Wallace on some of Barbados' fast bowlers and if they're getting ready for West Indies cricket. When you are insured with United Insurance, you know you're in safe hands because our AM Best Excellent Rating means that we have the financial strength and stability to protect your prized possessions. Rely on the company that understands your needs for property, motor, business, and marine insurance. For all your general insurance needs, choose United Insurance. Welcome back to United Insurance. It's Diana Lane. Find our Hendy Wallace is a man with some knowledge of what's going on among Barbadian cricketers, especially the fast bowlers. Hendy, there's been a lot of discussion on, on uh, young Kimar Roach. What's the current position on, on Roach? He's, he hasn't been involved in cricket for a couple of months now. Well, as you know, that uh, Kimar has some corrective surgery done to his shoulder. And I'm happy to say that at this point, he's back bowling. And with the rehabilitation, there's a process that they go through, which is being managed by obviously his something is set up by the physiotherapy department for the West Indies cricket board and the medical team as well and that's been um, kind of supervised by the BCA coaches in Barbados so at this point uh, Kimar Roach is now to the point where he's able to bowl uh, at least for half an hour spells and he's building on that all along he started back bowling about three weeks ago two and a half weeks ago as I said it's a process so He's at the point now where he's not feeling any side effects whatsoever. And we expect that Kimar Roach will be ready for match play uh, very, very soon. Uh, Tony, I know you're very concerned about the future, especially of some of our fast bowlers when we hear nothing. Are, are you happy with that news? Well, of course. I mean, mm -hmm. Kimar Roach in 2012 was one of the top bowlers in world cricket, 32 wickets in, I think it was about 10 tests, something like that, or 8 tests, whatever it was before he got injured, um, at a, an average rate, w which was only bettered by Philander from South Africa. You know, the, here's a fellow that wins matches for you, and he's won test matches for us against New Zealand here, when New Zealand were, were here last time. So to get him back, and he's young, he's not, you know, he's, what, 25 or thereabouts, if that, um, and he has a long career ahead of him, as long as he can keep fit mm -hmm. and that is the problem with so many of the fast bowlers keeping fit um i don't know what it is but you know you know people say oh you're going back to the old days but you look at people like um wes hall charlie griffith 
um, etc. And then Michael Holding in that period, of course, they, they were under Dennis Waite, who was very good in mining them properly. And they didn't seem to break down that much. Um, and now, and it's not only West Indians. I mean, the Australians can't even keep a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a promising fast boat on the field for more than two or three matches. Mm -hmm. The fellow Cummins in Australia, not mm -hmm. ours, um, he hasn't Pat played. Cummins. Pat Cummins. He and, hasn't played. And James now. Pattinson. Yeah, you call them. There are mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And they haven't, Cummins certainly hasn't played now for, I think, three seasons. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just wonder what is, why, 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 why this is happening. And, and Fidel Edwards, um, Hendy, happy to report, is back in the Barbados squad. There were, there were also question marks uh, relative to him because he hasn't been involved in any cricket. But he played in the Nagico Super 50, but again, he didn't look himself. And then he's been, oh, uh, happy with him? Yeah, well, again, he came back from the West Indies A Tour. You remember mm -hmm. that they were yeah, right. more or less trying to get him ready for the Test Series. And he came back when there were some concerns about some back pains. Uh, again, Happily, the scans that came back showed there was nothing serious, and he was able to, to get over that. And then once he satisfied the fitness levels that required uh, by the selectors and the medical team for Barbados, we had no hesitation in involving him in the Nagico Super 50. And he came through that, uh, as far as fitness was concerned, as I said, a more than satisfactory level. His performances, as you would expect, were not uh, always of the level that it should have been, but again, he would have been short of some, of some match practice. But uh, we felt that he delivered at times when it was critical. So we felt it justified in involving him in, in Barbados cricket again. Well, about Tony, it, it seems as if we may have two of our premier fast bowlers back for New Zealand and Bangladesh, uh, where, where we have a test series that stretches all the way down to September. I mean, unbelievably, but we play in June and then August and September. Well, the thing with the, the first series against New Zealand, you know, they, they're, they've now gained strength appreciably. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw what they did against England, came very close to winning that series. Of course, they're playing at home, um, beat the West Indies in two test matches by an innings within three days. Uh, and we just hung on for a draw in the other one. Um, so they've improved in their own conditions. They're coming back here now and they're looking at what happened two years ago, right. when they were absolutely walloped. They lost both tests, four of the five wonders, both T20s. Um, and they're bringing a stronger team now. Our team will go into that series with hardly any first-class cricket. This, I'm talking about the major players. players. They'll be in the IPL, they'll be playing IPL, and they won't have any, they're not prepared for test cricket right away. I mean, and that's, that's a concern, that you've got players playing T20 and then having to jump straight in to test matches. That, to me, is a concern. Well, Tony Cozzi, as usual, venting what his views are and also joining him on United Insurance Design and Life tonight was uh, Hendy Wallace, uh, cricket commentator and chairman of the Barbados Selection Panel. I'm your host, Andrew Seeley. Join us next week for more on United Insurance's Line and Life. <laughs>